Good morning. My name is Kevin Daniels, and uh, I'm here today at the silo in Bishop, California, to uh, uh, play some uh, mechanical anchors. Um, if you haven't watched the other two videos I did in regards to choosing uh, the materials for your bolt and um, which bolt to choose, I would ask you to maybe do so. On average, I spend an hour to two hours a day talking to people on the phone that call into my office asking about bolting, what type of bolt they should use, um, if they should bolt, when they should bolt. And for the last 20 years, that's what I've spent a good portion of my time doing every day is communicating as best I can based on the, the information and the knowledge that I have. Um, what we should be doing, what we shouldn't be doing. Um, to my knowledge, the information is correct and I've spent a, a great deal of time talking with people in the United States and other countries about bolting, bolting practices. And it's been a huge part of my life, as I said, for, for quite a while now. Um, so my goal is to give you the best info I can based on my experience. I've done a lot of bolting um, for many, many years and all different types of rock all over the world at this point. And um, we're at this silo today. The silo should be perfect for placing some of these bolts um, and working with them. I didn't want to just go out to the rocks here and blast in holes. So uh, this guy's probably been here for 40 to 50 years and this concrete should be um, cured really well. It's about eight inch thick. So we'll put some holes in it and then we'll take these anchors out when we're done and we'll um, go our way. The first bolt I want to place and talk a little bit about is uh, the Powers uh, Power Bolt. Um, formerly owned by the Raw Company and referred to as a five-piece bolt. It's a really a good bolt. Um, and it is a mechanical sleeve type bolt. <clears throat> you know, and I, I've had quite a few conversations with Powers about this bolt. Uh, what we should and shouldn't be doing with it, how we should be placing it. And so I want to take this opportunity to, um, to, to give you guys some information and make this really clear. Um, because... Uh, you know, there's conflicting info out there in regards to um, the use of the washer on this bolt. This bolt comes with a washer. Every bolt that they sell comes with a washer, and the washer's there for a reason, and um, it needs to be used with the bolt. In regards to the diameter of the bolt, this is a half inch. Um, the material that you're affixing, in this case hangers, um, needs to have the proper size hole in it. The, uh, the size of hole for a half inch uh, power bolt is half inch. And what I did was I went to the, the, the Powers website, www.powers.com, and I spoke with my sales rep. And at this point, I've dealt with like six different sales reps over the last 20 years. And they have all said the same thing, hands down, that um, we need to use the washer and we need to use um, a half inch uh, hanger if we're going to use a half inch bolt. And so I, I printed out this page here on mechanical anchors from their site, and hopefully you can see it. But on this side here, it gives an illustration of drilling the hole, cleaning the hole, placing the anchor, and tightening the anchor. <clears throat> and as you see here, the drill bit, in this case it would be a half inch drill bit, it is actually going through the, uh, the plated material that's being anchored to the concrete. Um, and this illustration here, the, um, the anchor is being driven in, and as you can see in this illustration, the entire sleeve of this anchor, which is a half inch in diameter, is going through the material being uh, fastened. And in this final illustration here, where it shows a little wrench, tighten it down, again, this entire sleeve is going uh, through the, uh, the, uh, the material being fastened, which would be the hanger. Um, also over here, they, they give a couple more illustrations. Um, you know, this is more of a, of a taper head for a flush fit finish. So this doesn't really apply to us. This illustration here does, um, you see the bolt and it's very clear that the, uh, the sleeve of the bolt is penetrating the material. Um, it also gives some written in, uh, installation instructions. And if you read these, um, you will ascertain through that information again, that that is how we should be using the, uh, using these bolts. So, um, I want to be clear, and, and I want to ask you guys, you know, people call me and they say, hey, what should I do, and what should I do, and I, I find myself going, you guys, you really need to be spending the time and energy in 
finding this information out for yourself. Um, just because someone tells you something um, doesn't mean it's true. Um, you know, there's always agenda uh, involved in things. I'd like to believe that everybody gives proper and accurate information, but people make mistakes. People are incorrect and people want to make money. So um, make sure that you guys do your due diligence and look this information up and um, answer your own questions. So uh, www.powers.com, please look at these product information pages. It will give you um, information on the different types of steel, information on the uh, installation, information on the torque specifications, information on the strengths, and uh, it's a great reference and you should be using it. <clears throat> um, on that note, let's go ahead and talk about placing this bolt. The first thing that we need to do would be to drill a hole. So standard uh, bits we use um, for a power drill or a hand drill at this point is a, uh, is a carbide tipped, usually an SDS bit. And obviously the length of the bit, the, the portion penetrating um, the rock or the concrete uh, needs to be longer than the, uh, the length of your bolt. Six inches is the pretty standard length bolt, uh, bit at this time, and it, it seems to do the job well. What I normally do is uh, drill the holes at least a half inch to three quarter of an inch longer than the bolt is. That way you can um, uh, remove the bolt. You've got some options. Um, so a piece of tape or something on your bit always works well and kind of give you, you a mark as to how deep you need to go um, with batteries and uh, cordless tools, You've, we've only got so much power in those batteries, so we need to, uh, you know, kind of get as many holes as we can. Um, the bits need to be sharp. The, um, the bit's made up, obviously, of a fluted steel stock uh, that has carbide tipping on it, and it has carbide shoulders on it, and it's really those shoulders that are giving us the diameter that are important. Uh, when people call and they say, hey, I can't, I can't, uh, uh, get this bolt to go in, or I'm having problems placing it, or am I using the right bit, or the bolts are too big, or yada, yada, yada. When I start to talk to them, usually what we find is that their bits are old. Old meaning maybe, you know, they've drilled 20 holes. And if the stone's hard, um, it may only take 20 holes before you've actually got a dull bit. And what's going to happen is these shoulders are going to... Um, are, wear, are going to wear down and you're going to start getting holes that are under the diameter in which you need. Um, and as you get holes that are under the diameter that, that you need, uh, if you're dealing with a hard stone, you're going to have problems driving those bolts in. And if we're hitting these bolts um, too hard, uh, at some point we're going to start doing some, some structural damage to them and then we've compromised um, their value and their strength value. And uh, we can't guarantee that the, um, the, the specifications we're, we should be getting, we're going to be getting. So um, on that note, we'll take our Bosch here. Pretty standard drill. Insert our bit. Got some safety glasses here. You know, obviously this thing... Um, we're going to be penetrating this rock, rock at, a, at a right angle. And what I found, um, especially in, in hard concrete or rock for that matter, uh, one of the problems is, you know, that first eighth of an inch of penetration, the rock's really hard. You've got a really radical angle there. And um, depending on the, on the bolt, um, it can create, you know, create a little bit of binding when you're... Um, when you're driving it in. So what I like to do is uh, kind of start the hole. Once I got it going a little bit, kind of um, kind of rotate this drill a little bit. Kind of open up the, that, that first eighth inch, even quarter inch of the hole. So you've got a little bit more of a, of a nice taper to drive that bolt into. And um, it'll help that bolt seat a little bit and it'll help start uh, with the installation process. Uh, drill this hole.
pretty easy with these power drills. Um, if I was hand drilling, I definitely wouldn't be drilling a, a half inch bolt. I'd probably be drilling a quarter inch bolt, maybe a three eighths inch bolt if I had to. Um, but most of the uh, most of the bolts at this point are being put in, you know, on rappel with power drills. Um, the second step in this is, you know, it really uh, is going to be uh, beneficial to clean out the hole really well. And I think that that part of this whole process gets overlooked quite a bit. And people um, take for granted that, you know, these mechanical anchors are moving and stuff's going on. So to clean out these holes um, is, uh, is important. And the manufacturers on those spec sheets, they tell you to clean out these holes. So a brush a test tube brush for the most part works well. Um, a blow tube or some type of um, a, uh, a blowout bulb works really well. And I prefer the tube just because most all the bolting I do is on lead. So uh, it works a lot better. Um, I usually uh, I usually use uh, a tube. Now, we are going to have to disassemble this bolt to get it onto or through the hanger with the half inch hole. But that said, when we reassemble it, It slides over the sleeve, which is what we want. Now, the sleeve of this bolt, the split sleeve is really, you know, where all of our expansion takes place. And as we tighten this thing down, it draws the bolt out of the hole <clears throat> over this tapered cone and creates expansion here. So to get this baby started, we need to make sure she's set in here about right you want to be careful you know you don't want to whack the hanger That is some hard concrete. I don't know how many years this stuff has been here, but it's freaking really hard. And this is a brand new half inch bit. The next uh, thing we're going to have to do is tighten this guy down. And to get it started, I just use a regular 9 16 wrench. And I use a box end wrench. In my opinion, it works best. It looks like this bad boy is not seating right. I can't ascertain exactly why, but what's happening is it's spinning in the hole, which means that this nose cone hasn't made proper contact with the inside for some reason. Because what has to happen is this bolt has to tighten down, and for it to tighten down, this nose cone can't spin. If the nose cone spins, when I tighten down the bolt, the nose cone spins as well. So <clears throat> I brought a I brought a tool hoping that maybe something like this one ha would happen and this is just a regular a funkness device. So you whack this thing a few times and what it'll do is um, it'll help seat that nose cone and make sure that nose cone isn't spinning in there as you tighten down the bolt. You know and I I like 
the raw five piece bolt. I think it's a good bolt. Um, that said, this triplex design is a better design. Um, and that's one of the reasons why it's a better design is you're not dealing with this nose cone that's buried in the hole. Um, and we'll, we'll place that in a few minutes. So I funked this thing a bunch of times with the funkness device and um, it should be seated at this point. I'm going to say it's going to tighten right up for us. So I take my 916 wrench. Yeah, sure enough, we're good. <clears throat> the next thing I want to do is kind of orientate this hanger. You know, and I kind of took for granted being that this is a silo, that um, it was in good shape. And I should have addressed the fact that before I placed this bolt, I should have checked. You know, if this was a big chunk of rock right here, you know, we'd be looking for any kind of fractures. We'd be looking for weaknesses, pockets, things like that. But we're going to say this is a nice piece of granite. And it's super solid where I'm placing this bolt. <clears throat> I've seen huge chunks of rock with bolts in them at the base of cliffs. If you've been to the Riverside Quarry, you know, I mean, there's, honest to God, there's chunks of rock there that are not as big as this silo, but they're pretty damn big. And they got bolts stuck in them, and they got glue holding them on, and anchors and shit holding them on, and it's fun climbing, but I'm worried that at some point somebody's going to get hurt by one of these things. So um, make sure the rock in the area that you're placing these bolts is, is good, especially if they're anchors. And when I talk about anchors and, and placing anchors and choosing anchors um, in the next video, I'll address that. So torquing these things, the manufacturers have torquing specifications for their bolts. For half inch plated steel um, powers power bolt, uh, they want 45 foot pounds. If it was a stainless steel model, they'd want 25 foot pounds. So what I tell people to do is use a torque wrench. And um, you know, I need to be doing that, telling people that. So drop this torque wrench on here. Start turning it. Till we get our 45 pounds. There we go. <clears throat> Honestly, you know, until I started selling these bolts and working with these bolts and answering these questions, um, I didn't use a torque wrench. And to be honest with you, because I do most all my bolting on lead, I don't carry a torque wrench with me. But at this point, I've got a pretty good feel for what 45 pounds is. So what I would suggest you guys do if you're not gonna use a torque wrench, is to at least place a few and use a torque wrench on them to get a feel of what that feels like. And for me, you know, with the six inch wrench, that's me cranking on that thing until, I mean, it's hurt my hand pretty good and I've got a pretty good feel of what 45 pounds is. Um, we need to be in the ballpark. We don't want to over tighten these bolts because you can definitely over tighten them. And by over tightening them, we're um, possibly doing damage to the bolt, to the integrity of the bolt. So the manufacturers don't want us to over tighten these bolts. Fix hardware doesn't want you to over tighten its bolts. Powers doesn't want you to. Hilti doesn't want you to. Um, and with that, you know, uh, we've got a we've got a properly installed um, solid bolt. Um, thank you very much. I think uh, that covers the raw powers uh, power bolt.